Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This week we are working on this forest creature using cake and chocolate. Firstly, I'm sticking two drums together. I've had this footage a while and I've completely forgotten the sizes, but I'm going to hazard a guess at a 13 inch drum and a 15 inch drum. You want to just add hot glue to the top of your smallest drum and stick it underneath the larger one. Once the glue has set, I'm taking a wooden dowel and my white chocolate skull just to check the positioning of the dowel. I don't measure, I just try to imagine where his body would be in cake. I'm just marking a little spot where I want it to go and then taking a wooden drill bit that's slightly smaller than my wood. I have a 12mm dowel and my drill piece is 10mm. As you gently drill down, you'll notice the hole can be a little wider due to all the chewed up sawdust that comes from inside it. That's why we use the smaller drill piece. Clean all this up and add some hot glue down into the hole before banging in your dowel with a hammer. Just make sure it's straight and then add a little ring of hot glue around the base for extra security. The deeper your dowel in the boards, the sturdier it will be. Now just like my fortune teller tutorial, I'm using one of my white chocolate skulls. I will eventually have these in my shop in various colours for you to buy, but I'm just scoring out a hole with a scalpel near the back to fit my dowel in. I'm also shaving the chocolate out at a slight angle so that the skull will look slightly down. Keep all your extra chocolate shavings as you'll need them later. I'm covering the top of the dowel with some tape, just so that the bare wood is covered, and then I'm using bubble tea straws for the rest. One straw isn't usually enough to cover it, so you can just overlap it with another one on the other side. Now melt down those chocolate shavings gently in the microwave and put it back into the hole. Push your skull down firmly onto your dowel so that it's tilted down. Just scrape off any excess chocolate that leaks at the bottom. To cover our hot glue, you can use a number of food safe methods, but I'm cutting this circle of greaseproof paper with a hole in the centre so I can slip it around the dowel to cover the hot glue. I'm just adding ganache to stick it down and then covering the top in ganache and part of the board to glue my cake on with. Similar to the greaseproof paper, I've cut a slit and a hole in the cake so it will easily manoeuvre around the dowel. Add your filling and when it comes to adding the next layer of cake, you'll see my hole is in the same position but I've cut a slit at a different angle. I don't want all my slits all in the same place as it will weaken the structure of the cake. Just change the position of your slit each time you add a layer. Once I got four layers high, I'm now at the base of the skull, so I'm adding three quarters of a cake layer and carving out semicircles to fit around it. Use those cut off pieces to then add a bit of height for a humpback. All these cakes are six inch round. Now just start carving away the cake for his cloaked body. I'm flattening out the front near the skull and slimming him down just a little. I want to add a bit of a train to his cloak, so I'm using ganache around the back and sticking on cake pot mixture. This is the offcuts of the cake mixed with ganache and buttercream. I know it never looks all that appetising but it is filled with all the good stuff and makes great use of otherwise wasted scraps. I'm just spreading this on around the back to add a little volume for his trailing cloak. Then coat the whole thing in chocolate ganache. You may have noticed it's a little paler than usual. I accidentally made milk chocolate instead of dark chocolate as I was already working with milk for a different project. It just makes a slightly softer ganache. Smooth the ganache out with an acetate smoother, but don't worry about getting it too neat. I'm using sugar paste to add little peaks down his back where his spine will be sticking up. I'm then adding a big roll of white sugar paste around the sides and back and pulling up the excess paste towards the skull. Be 
peekaboo. Just start trimming the paste so that the whole base is covered and try and grab all that excess paste from the top, snipping off all the heavy parts. Lucky for us, he's wearing a ragged cloak, so as long as you manage to smooth around the indents in his spine, you can just keep trimming off extra paste and squashing the seams together until he's fully covered. Make sure to leave a little of the paste at the back for his cloak. To hold his wooden staff in position, I'm knocking a small jeweler's screwdriver down into the drum with my hammer. This makes a snug little hole for a kebab stick to fit in. Because it's so snug, it doesn't need any glue, but feel free to add some if you feel it needs it. I've then got an 18 inch gauge wire to hold his arm. I'm poking in holes on either side of the cake to mark in where his shoulders are going to start. Using a spare piece of kebab stick, twist your wire around in a loop and snip off that little extra overhang. Bend in an elbow so that the loop will fit on the kebab stick and your arm will reach the shoulder point. Where the wire hits the shoulder, bend it towards the body and loop it back on itself. This is the part that will be inserted into the cake for support. I'm just taping my loop together to keep it secure and pushing this down inside a bubble tea straw for inserting into the cake. Feel down the straw where the wire ends and just snip past it. Now slide your loop over the kebab stick and push your straw into the marked shoulder point, pushing right in as deep as you can get it. To stop the wire from jiggling about in the straw, you can bung the hole up with some sugar paste. Just keep adding balls of paste, pushing it in with your dressing tool until it's full. Whilst that sets, we're going to texture the whole cloak with some rolled up tin foil. You've seen me use this lots and it's my favourite inexpensive texturing tool. Now to give him some horns, I am again taking pieces of 18 gauge wire and just holding them around a large cylindrical shape. When you let go, you'll have a nice clean arch. Do this twice so you have identical horns. Push in the skull where you want your horns to go so it leaves an impression and then take a spare straight piece of wire and push and twist a bit like you would with a screwdriver to embed the wire into the hole. Once you feel that the hole is deep enough to hold it, you can place your shaped wire in. Feel free to cover your wire with tape if you wish, but I find most people want to keep the skulls like this rather than eat them, and as there's no moisture as such in the white chocolate, the wire is paper covered and should be fine. Now I'm using my trusty finger ruler to measure the shoulder to elbow to make the other side match, just so his arm will be the same size but flat against the body. I'm now taping a spare piece of thinner wire to the top of my kebab stick so we can add a bit of interest to his staff. Just bend the wire in any way you want to create a gnarly piece of wood. Roll out a sausage of brown paste and dampen your kebab stick. Push this sausage against your kebab stick so it attaches at the front. It will look super bumpy, but don't worry because that's what we're aiming for. Then add more water around the back of the kebab stick to push the gaps closed to fully encase the stick. With the Dresden tool, mark in some deep wood grain and feel free to add a few little spikes for snapped branches. It might look a little wobbly, but it's attached to the board and the cake and it will be nice and sturdy once all the paste is set. For his horns, I've rolled out a long tapered sausage and sliced right through the center with a scalpel. Dampen inside this channel and then lay the sausage gently over the horns so that the wire embeds itself into the channel. Push the channel closed where you can and smooth it with the soft end of the Dresden tool, curling the very end of the horn back on itself. Marking some lines to your horn, making sure to support the wire as you do it. 
You can also add extra texture here by running your sharp end of the Dresden tool up and down. Complete the second horn in the same way, smoothing the base onto the skull. I've got a sausage of white paste and I'm just bending in knuckles for a creepy pointed finger, which I'm wrapping around the staff and supporting the end on the wire. Create three more of these fingers, adding in fingernails and knuckle creases and laying them all together on the staff. Add a small sausage to the wire for his wrist too. To bulk out his arm, I'm adding another sausage of paste using the same method of pushing the wire into the channel and closing the seams. This doesn't have to be neat at all, as you can see we're covering it in layers of paste to build up his ragged cloak. Just keep pushing on flat pieces until you feel his arm is big enough and trim off any excess. I'm now adding deep creases to the material. Pull at the edges of the paste with your fingers for ripped details. Keep layering up the material until you're happy with the look. For his other hand, I flattened a piece of paste and I cut a triangle out to make his thumb. Twist the thumb so it gets longer and thinner and also pat down any sharp cut edges. Marking three more lines into the end of the paste to make four fingers. Again, thin out the fingers and pull off any paste where his finger may get too long. Mark in lines where the fingers would bend and add details on knuckles and fingernails. I'm pushing all the fingers together and curling them up in a relaxed position before twisting below the thumb to thin out the wrist. Now with a sausage of paste, follow your arm markings and stick it on with water. To help it stay there, merge the paste with the cloak using a Dresden tool. Do the same on this arm, adding in material creases and covering it in ripped pieces of sugar paste for a sleeve. To keep that hand in place, I've just put a small piece of cocktail stick in to support it. Gently slide the hand onto the stick and attach the wrist to the end of the sleeve. Just keep building up ripped pieces of sugar paste all around the arms, underneath the skull and around the skull building up that oversized hood. Then place a large piece of textured paste over the whole skull and horns and start ripping the edges. This doesn't have to merge with the cloak, as you can see I'm pushing some of my ripped pieces back on itself to look like that curled tree bark. After all, he is a creature of the forest. I'm now adding a base colour of brown all over before spritzing it with water and wiping it to get into all that texture we made. Once that's in, I'm giving it another layer of brown and dabbing off wet areas to create extra interest. Thank you. 
I've now filled my airbrush with green from mossy patches and I'm just adding them haphazardly where I think moss would gather and grow. I've now switched to dark brown. This is the regular brown with a little bit of black added to really deepen the creases in the material and dark and shadowy areas. I'm also drawing on lines with my airbrush to look like streaky wet drips. Have a little practice on paper drawing lines, it's super easy when you get used to it. I'm hand painting the horns with some dark brown and black gel and also painting the staff in a lighter brown, which pretty much just looks purple on camera. I'm using black gel with white powder added to paint in the eye sockets and also drips coming from these two just to make him extra creepy. I then went in with white dust mixed with water to highlight parts of the horns. Using rough pieces of green paste, I'm adding these on top of the green mossy areas and stabbing with a piping tip for big patches of furry moss. Go over these again with the dark green just to make them merge better. As he has been walking around the forest at such a slow pace, even mushrooms have managed to grow on his cloak. I'm tapping on small white spikes into the moss and curling them upwards and leaving these to set. Once they have hardened up, I'm then gently placing a flattened disc of white to the tops to complete the mushroom. You can also add a little bit of brown paint to these so they don't look as clean. I felt he needed something in his staff so I've rolled a spike of green paste and I'm just pushing in sharper edges between my fingers so it looks a bit like a gem. You could make yours from isomalt if you're feeling adventurous which would look pretty cool. I'm then pushing this down into the curled part of the staff and adding an extra spike underneath so it looks like it's wrapped in there. I'm just running my paintbrush with white paint across any sharp edges for gem catch lights. Finally for the board, I'm adding piping gel and I've blitzed some Oreos in my tiny blender. This makes great dirt as the Oreos are already dark and the white filling mixes with crumbs to make a lighter shade. I started to add this to my board and then realised now would be a good time to add my ribbon on so that the slight overhang of the ribbon sticking up would stop all my crumbs from falling out. As you add the crumbs to your board you can compress them with the back of your spoon and it's surprising that it actually keeps them nice and steady. This again is down to the Oreo's soft filling acting like a glue. To finish off, I have painted the name onto a piece of top sugar paste and I'm just cutting a strip around it before cutting in little ribbon ends. Fold the banner over on itself to make a scroll. This should stick nicely with piping gel. Gently airbrush your scroll with brown airbrush colour and we are done! A creepy creature of the forest in white chocolate and cake. I love seeing how they progress as I start adding details because I never measure anything so it's good practice for trying to visualise how high or low the skull would be in relation to his body and I think it worked out pretty cool. He's certainly not somebody I would like to come across in the forest but I would like to admire him from afar. He looks like he has plenty of stories to tell. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you found something useful from it. 
If you did, please give it a thumbs up and a comment. And if you're new here, please do hit that subscribe button and edge me that little bit closer to a silver play button. Thanks guys, see you next week.